Now in this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate how to do a standard luminescent acquisition. Here on the home page of Aura 4.0, making use of an Amy HTX imaging system, you would go down to the bottom left hand corner and you will see that there are four tabs indicating the type of imaging that one can do. And here we are going to select luminescence. And it's already been pre-selected as indicated by the orange color of the tab. And what you can see off to the right is collectively known as the camera ribbon for luminescence. Essentially, it's a listing of all the different camera parameters and individual values for each parameter uh, that you would be using to acquire your image. What's listed here are all the default values for each of the settings. And so for the purposes of simplicity of introduction, let's go ahead and just simply hit the acquire button, see what we get. What you will see immediately is this rectangular white space that occupies the main viewing area of the homepage of Aura. And this is where your image will be presented. And the first part of the image that's presented is a white light photograph. And what you can see here is our calibration device. And now what has been added on top of the white light image is the luminescent data from the calibration device. And what we can see is that we have two different signals, one here off to the left and another off to the right. If one looks at the calibration bar in radians, and you can see the low and the high value uh, indicated, and the lookup table is going to be red for higher values, blue for lower values, this signal off to the left is a stronger signal than the signal off to the right. So what do we have here? This uh, green rimmed window is basically a summation of the metadata associated with the image that we've just taken. At the top, you have the folder window, which is going to give you the opportunity to save the image in a particular location. And I've already designated this. Below that, you have the file name of the image. And this is something that you definitely do not want to change because it will be used by the image manager system of Aura, basically the file finding system of Aura to organize the files that are sought after in terms of their date and timestamp. And in front of that, you have the user's designation. Okay. And below that, you have four different descriptors that can be used again as a metadata series to describe what the image that you've taken is. And you can use whatever system you want to populate these four windows. What I've done is from most general to most specific. And you can see that the third window here designates who the user is. All right. So for our purposes, we'll simply go ahead and save this initial image. And what we have here now is our first luminescent image where luminescent data from the calibration device has been superimposed on to a white light photograph of the calibration device. And we are ready to go ahead and conduct any kind of analyses of the signal intensity and report it in quantitative format or simply to take a picture of the image that was generated. And all of these techniques are explained elsewhere in our analytical series tutorials. Now that you've seen basically how straightforward it is to go ahead and take a luminescent image, I'd like to take a brief moment and walk through the various different camera settings that are listed down here in the camera ribbon for luminescence and explain the options that you have available to you. First of all is exposure. You can enter in an exposure time in terms of seconds. And typically this will be anywhere from one to 30 seconds. Now, if you happen to have a target with a relatively low intensity luminescent signal coming from it, this time can go to as long as 300 seconds or five minutes. You typically don't want to image longer than that. Binning options range from unbinned designated as none or one to heavy binning, which is eight by eight binning. And typically, again, one will use either low or medium binning. Now for f-stop or the size of the opening of the aperture of the camera system, the default setting is 1.2. That's as wide open as the aperture will get. Um, it does go down, if you will, in diameter 
to the narrowest uh, diameter designated by the f-stop value of 16, which is for systems where you have very, very bright uh, sources of light. Now, with regard to emission, you have the option to select an open uh, pathway, if you will, to the camera, which doesn't use any emission filter. But there are, are situations in luminescence where you will want to go ahead and select a specific emission filter. And these are listed here. And you can select from any of uh, the ones uh, presented. All of these emission filters are 20 nanometer bandpass filters, allowing plus or minus 10 nanometer from the number given here. Uh, as wavelength that can pass through the filter and go to the camera. Next are your field of view options. The maximum field of view that you can get on an Amy HTX is 25 by 17 centimeter square field of view. And that's what you're seeing here. You can go stepwise down from 25 by 17 all the way to six by four centimeter square. And in this case, you would be imaging not five mice at a time as you would with the 25 by 17, but typically just part of a mouse. And here, the motivation at a small field of view is to get enhanced magnification, which will of course provide greater resolution, not only of the white light image of your target, but also the optical data that is coming from it. Now below all of these FOV options is the object height. Object height is making reference to the height of your object. And that is typically going to be about 1.5 centimeters for your average mouse. If you're imaging rats, you'll want to increase this value to about three centimeters. In general, measure the height of your object and put in that value here for object height. This will allow the focusing of the camera system to be optimized to the point at which light is released from your target object. All right, final parameter for bioluminescence camera settings is X-ray. Here, X-ray is functioning as a background or atlas modality. In Aura, you will be able to co-register the optical data with the X-ray image and so determine exactly where the optical data is arising from in your target. You have two different energy levels, low and high, that you can select from. Lower energy X-ray at 10 keV will be used for low density, smaller objects, such as insects or neonate mice, which are essentially all cartilage and no bone. High energy X-ray at 40 keV in the Amy HTX and 50 keV in the Lago X are typically used for imaging adult mice and rats. All right, so that is a brief summary of the luminescent camera ribbon and the individual settings and the options for values of each setting that are available to you. You now know how to do luminescent imaging on an SI imaging device. In this particular case, we used an Amy HTX system, but you could readily apply the same approach on a Lago or Kino system from SI Imaging. <music>